Hey y'all, hope you're doing well today. So in today's message, I want to explore how we can learn to identify pressure because that's the main tool um, of a, a manipulative person. And so in my opinion, anyway, um, of course they have gaslighting and, and you know, making you doubt yourself and all of this as well. But I feel like pressure kind of is, is on a, a foundational level behind all of their manipulative tactics. So I think it's really important that we examine that, right? Um, and it's not just about, I just want to reiterate, it's, it's not just about, you know, if you happen to get involved in some way, friendship, uh, relationship, a uh, uh, social group, um, work, associates, whatever it is, it's, it's not just about like this one-on-one -on -one kind of toxic situation where, you know, I want you to keep all this stuff in mind to protect yourself, but just in society and as part of our daily life also. Okay, so um, because this stuff affects us on a greater scale too. Um, so, uh, pressure, pressure. You know, it's, um, I feel like it has been normalized um, in our modern cult culture, even celebrated. Like the more you can tolerate, it's like, you know, you, you get all these accolades. It's like you're, you're um, celebrated, you know? And, um, and that's not good because what happens and I mean, you can see this even in sports, you know, I'm not a sports person whatsoever and it's nothing against anybody if they are, but it's just, it's sad to me when you see, um, you know, like even kids that are pushed and pushed and pushed to the point of, you know, passing out and, um, uh, I've, I've heard, you know, throughout the years stories of, um, celebrities that have been, um, pressured to, you know, um, to conform to these particular standards that are totally unrealistic and it's at the total detriment of their health and, um, you know, their, their schedule, if they're on tour or whatever, it's just really, um, depleting and exhausting. So, um, that's what I mean when I say even celebrated, it's kind of like, um, it, it has, pressure has been normalized and celebrated and, um, and also pressure is used as a way to, um, to feel that, that primal need to belong to a group. It's like, um, that's why I was talking about recently in my, I think it was my last video even, or two, about, um, you know, how it's, there's a, a, there's a price to pay, unfortunately, to belong to a group of humans, usually. Um, and it means that you are willing to conform to their standards, whatever they are, okay? Whether they're well-intended or not or whatever, it's kind of like you're expected to conform. So you're essentially answering to, see, that group of human beings. And you're bound in that way to them. And it can be a small group or it can be a large group, meaning society or whatever. And that's going to be kind of getting close to the heart of our message today. But I hope to offer you a tool um, so that when uh, you feel pressure, um, first of all, we need to learn to identify it. Because again, it's been normalized and it's just very subtle like that. So once we're able to identify it, then we can implement this tool, okay? And essentially, it's going to be um, learning how to develop a habit of recalling what invalidates pressure okay every time you come across it every time you feel it you're just gonna you know you're gonna be prompted to recall what I'm gonna share with you today is as a means of invalidating the pressure on the spot and so if we can just create this habit it's going to serve us really well okay so um you know I was <laughs> I was reminded of the movie, I don't know if you've ever seen it, with Jim Carrey. It's called A Series of Unfortunate Events. It's really, I like it because it's um, it's kind of a, a fantasy movie and um, maybe geared towards kids, but I just really enjoyed it because it was kind of like, you ever like to just space out and just um, kind of feed your imagination and it just kind of like, a, it's like a little vacation from the Matrix and the complications of, of you know, modern culture or whatever. It's like you just get to zone out for a little bit. I was reminded of, the, of that movie, so I just wanted to share it with you all. But the title of it is what's important in our message, okay? So think about that title, A Series of Unfortunate Events. Um, 
it came to mind when I was considering how powerful our mind is. You know, we talk a lot about the different layers or levels um, of the human psyche on my channel. And um, it's crucial, really, um, to protecting ourselves that we understand that. Um, again, it's, it's, I believe, not as simple as just um, having faith and not doing any work at all. We are instructed to, um, to get wisdom. And furthermore, with all of our getting of wisdom to get understanding, that's set apart as super important, see? So there's work to be done, okay? Faith without works is dead. So we have to, we have to um, do some work. <laughs> so, um, so understanding um, how the human mind works is going to just be a huge part of, of constructing this armor to protect ourselves out here because we are told that we're sent out as sheep amidst the wolves, right? Ravenous, too, at that. And I just want to stop here and, and reiterate um, that despite or regardless of whatever your, your own personal beliefs are with regards to um, reality and spirituality and religion. I hope that my content is beneficial to you, for you, and I hope that the insights that I offer are going are going to be um, valuable to you. Um, that's my intention, okay, um, regardless of what your beliefs are. Of course, I have my own beliefs, um, and I, they certainly do um, come into my messages, and, and I, um, I use that as part of explaining different points and concepts and offering you different lenses, you know, to expand your mind, but I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here, um, and I just hope that this is helpful um, to you and for you, regardless of your beliefs. So, um, all right, yeah, our, our mind is powerful, it's powerful, and I believe that our subconscious beliefs, meaning the beliefs, meaning the beliefs that we have that we're not even aware of that we have, okay, these paradigms sitting way back here somewhere in our unconscious or subconscious somewhere. In other words, we're just not aware of them. They're driving factors in the decisions that we make. And we don't even know it, okay? So um, the first step is to become aware of that right there. Um, but because we have subconscious beliefs that we're unaware of, and, and they influence our decisions, this is how we can bring about we can bring about unfortunate things um, in our own lives, see? And so um, we're gonna talk about how to, how to make sure that we take control of that um, to the best of our ability at least, right? So um, my point here is that we can, we can manifest what we don't want, you know, um, which is why it's, not just important, but crucial, and I would say, and I, it's not an opinion, I've, I know for sure, I believe this in my heart wholeheartedly, based on my own observations and life experiences, it's not just important or crucial, but it's life-saving, life-saving, that we take control of the part of our mind that we do have control over, okay? Um, and we can do that by intentionally thinking on these things. The Bible explains this, right? Um, and it's important that as we consciously try to think on good things, that we're not ignoring the bad to the degree that we're totally naive and oblivious. It's not about that, but it's about um, being able to see it all and consciously choosing to focus over here, which makes fear irrelevant. Fear can be a big driving factor in um, in pressure in our lives too. Fear of not belonging. You know, if we don't agree with something within a group, well, again, that's like an instinct to want to secure our place within, you know, our, our um, community for survival. It's, it's not even something we consciously think about, but there's pressure going on on some unconscious level there, okay? And, um, and that can be hacked and exploited by someone with bad intentions. Um, and fear plays a part in all that. So um, it's just being aware of all this and taking control, okay? Um, and I say all this because our subconscious is impressionable. It's impressionable. That's a really big, important term. If you're journaling, I just encourage you to circle that or highlight it, okay? The fact that our subconscious is impressionable, okay? 
either we can influence it, okay, on purpose, per directives from God, which if you want to note this Bible verse, um, as far as what to think on, you can write Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, okay? So either we can take control and influence our subconscious, okay? Which is impressionable. Or someone else can. Or a group can. Or society can. Okay? So, you know, a lot of times, this is what's so off-putting to me about... I guess what you might call organized religion. Um, they, they draw all these, these hard lines of, you know, that's, that's of the devil. That's, that's demonic or satanic or that's bad or that's hypocritical. Or they're just so quick to judge on things that they don't even know anything about. People that are uh, heavily entrenched in or enmeshed in organized religion, okay? Um, and that's totally... It's keeping you confined within these, uh, this rigid uh, limiting structure within your mind that you're not even able to see things that would protect you and benefit you if you didn't have that, that limiting construct, you know, closing in your mind. That's why I'm, I'm always talking about expanding your mind on my channel. So a lot of times you hear that, you know, like meditation is of the devil, for example, right? Um, well, if you look up the definition of meditation from uh, the 1200s, it means contemplation. Contemplation, which is, um, you know, in the Bible it says think on these things, like I just said, right? So it's just, um, it's very deep or devout contemplation. Um, now, there is the practice, um, one avenue of, of um, approaching meditation, right? One um, way you can do it is to do what they call emptying the mind. Um, and it seems contradictory too that um, that instruction to think on these these good things, but it depends on our intention. And here's this is just my opinion, but let me share with you, okay? Um, if you if you try to steal your mind, see, and we're instructed to do, to do that too, to be still and know that I am God. It doesn't mean you're not vigilant. It, you know, it's it's like you can try to empty your mind. But you're still on guard. That that's that's the difference in someone who is going to protect themselves from you know there being a bad outcome from you know these type of meditative uh, practices versus someone who's not. It's just there's a difference here, okay? But um, but it's beneficial because it can allow things that are um, unconsciously unacknowledged or um, suppressed with it, you know, things that are in our subconscious mind, it can allow them to float up to the surface, you know, so it's, it's beneficial in that way, and I know this from experience, okay, because then once it comes to our conscious awareness, it's workable, you know, so I just want to say that, uh, but you, you need to be vigilant and on guard too, um, and, and the other thing is, um, you know, we're just, again, we're trying to access the subconscious, okay, and, and to protect it and guard it because we know it's impressionable. Um, so check this out. When I was researching today for my notes, um, you know, in the Bible, we're told not to receive the mark of the beast, right? Um, and remember, our, I said that our subconscious is impressionable, right? Well, we have, let's break that word down, impressionable. We, we know what able is. And then we have impression means mark, a mark produced by pressure. That's from the late 14th century. And I thought, yes, yes, yes. We are, we are instructed to guard our mind and our, our heart um, and, and to really... Um, What's the, what's the word I want to use? Um, take authority over our thoughts, you know? Um, and and so, yes, yes. Um, understanding how all this works is a big part of that. So, again, mark means a trace or impression, okay? So, they're kind of synonymous. <laughs> An impression and a mark. Also, um, when looking at the term mark... It means a boundary sign or a limit. So what we're doing is we're making the mark first before someone else can come into our subconscious and make the mark or the impression. We're doing it. We're taking authority. We're claiming it because it's ours. Okay? 
So, yes, we can take authority over our own minds and our life choices. Therefore, because, again, our subconscious influences our conscious um, thoughts and, therefore, our decisions and, therefore, the outcomes in our life. Okay? We can take authority over our own minds um, and life choices. Um, or something or someone else can make that mark for us. So, to make your mark is to attain distinction. And this was really interesting. Um, because controlling and manipulative people, they don't want you to be separate and distinct. But God says you have been set apart and chosen to be his own special treasure. Okay, and then we have in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, it says, Before we were even born, God set us apart. Before we were even born, see, this is important. So, to be set apart means at the side, which I kind of like. Like, you know, he's on our he's on our side. And in my dreams, you know, um, with Jesus, he was right with me, you know. Um, and so, if you think about uh, controlling people, a lot of times they're either in front of us, you know, um, just wanting to totally diminish us or... Um, it's like we don't exist or they're behind us which means they're pressuring us you know but but no see God's at our side in that way right um, but yeah we were we're set apart so it means at the side by itself and away from others so I hope that gives you comfort if you're having a season where you know you're kind of a recluse um, a hermit you know it's 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 for good right if you're doing the work yeah, so let's take this um, this into a breakdown here to be set apart. So you have a pars, P-A-R-S, or the Latin ad, um, which means two. And then partum, which is Latin, means a part of the body. Okay, so we are set apart to be a part of this greater spiritual body. We're not really alone. We look alone to others, but we're not, okay? We're connected um, in that way, um, energetically, spiritually, okay? For the same purpose. And then you have the Proto-Indo-European root, uh, pere, P-E-R-E, which means to grant or allot. So this kind of, you know, prompted the next um, thoughts I'm going to share with you. So not only um, are we talking about our inheritance, but our heritage. And I know that those terms are used interchangeably a lot, but let me just make a distinction here. So inheritance is, is usually, um, you know, <laughs> um, attained by, um, you know, your relationship with someone, you know, here on earth. And, um, you know, maybe you lived according to what they felt like was a good life, you know, and all that plays a part into your inheritance, right? But heritage is, um, I view this as not being dependent on, on um, you know, being judged, you know, if, if you lived a good life or not. And, and I'm, I'm talking about like, what we're really doing here is pulling in the, you know, what you might call the Christ factor, because it's like, your heritage, your spiritual heritage, according to here in Jeremiah, before we were born, God set us apart. It's kind of like it was secured, you know, in that way. Um, it was, it was um, stable, um, regardless, because of, you know, if you look, if you use the Christian lens, because of that, that Christ factor, you might say, right? So, um, inheritance, you might view as dependent on things and heritage is kind of like it's promised okay but but there still is this factor of free will and so again this is where um, I know in my own growth I've had to really stretch my mind to be able to understand you know things are not either or sometimes they're both in and there's um, I believe such a thing as divine paradox and so that's just something for you to think on you know um, but yeah it's um, it's kind of like going into the concepts of destiny and you know our lives being uh predestined um uh but it's but yet you still have free will too 
and uh, and then you have God coming into the equation, you know, and working all things for the good of those who love Him. So it's kind of like, remember those books when you're young? Um, they had these back when I was in elementary school. They had like two or three. There wasn't a lot in our school library, but you could start reading the book, and then and then it says um, you get to choose like the outcome. You know, does the main character take this route or this route? And then depending on what they choose, you go to a different page to continue the story. It's kind of like that in our life, you know? But um, I just thought that was cool. I had to share um, those verses with you all. So what's, what's super ironic about this being um, set apart, about us being set apart, is, uh, is this. Um, <clears throat> This is what those unwilling to relinquish the ego are so mad about. Okay? It's kind of like they could have it as well. Okay? This this gift. Um, maybe. This is hard. If God set us apart before we were born, were there some that were not set apart? I don't know. I'm not an expert. But let's just... Um, Let's just kind of, let's use this as um, just another lens <laughs> to look at this really complicated topic of um, narcissism and uh, manipulation and people that live by the lie or, you know, whatever you want to say, right? But my point here is that there's certainly a factor of jealousy at work in people who um, pressure us and manipulate us, okay? It's kind of like they don't want to let go of that ego. They're heavily um, enmeshed in it. Um, and it's because they want their cake and they eat it too, you know? Um, in other words, they don't want to change their ways. So, you know, um, what I'm talking about being set apart, um, separate and distinct and all that, it's not about being self-righteous. It's not about that. Or even like appearing to be, um, uh, you know, the opposite, you know, appearing to be super, you know, humble. And it's not like that. It's, it's a personal thing. It's a personal walk. It's a personal journey. It's like deciding to consult your own private investigator before every decision. It's like you have this companion at your side going through the journey with you, right? There were two sets of, of um, uh, footprints on the sand, right? Okay? Um, it's personal. Nobody else sees it, but you do. You have it. You have this this lifeline, this spiritual lifeline and, and friend. And, um, um, and it's, you know, they have it's, when I say private investigator, I say that because it's like they have access to greater insight than you, more information than you do, right? But you're um, you're blessed in that way that you can um, consult, okay, um, this this higher part of you, okay. And I believe in in a divine paradox here that there is a distinction and a separation, and also it can be a part of you as well, okay. Um, but it also means trusting in good outcomes, okay? What does it mean to be set apart, to be separate and distinct, um, to be tapped into this numinous part of this greater spiritual body and all this? It means trusting in good outcomes. It's trusting your gut, your intuition, okay? Despite pressure to make someone or something else uh, relevant, right? By people pleasing to your own detriment, okay? Um, and... and Sometimes we're pressured to um, to put someone else's opinion first because of their title, you know, their expertise, their professional opinion, or whatever it is. Be be so careful, okay? Um, because we're no we're under no obligation to gamble with your life to placate a vain person, okay? Uh, pressure, I believe, is at the root of all manipulation. But the problem here is identifying it. Pressure can be cloaked in celebrations, in compliments, uh, being overly agreeable, um, a, needy, a needy situation where your expertise may be summoned, explaining why someone else's greater wisdom should override yours, right, for your own good. Okay, all of these are different ways that pressure can manifest itself in our lives, cloaked as something else, okay? Um, pressure can uh, present as, you know, well, everybody else does it. You know, even if that isn't said, it can be implied 
that this is just the norm to, to you know, follow these steps in whatever situation you've got going on in your life. You know, it's like, well, it's just the norm. It's just the standard. It's what everybody does. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's a common practice or whatever. It can uh, present as uh, minimizing something like, ah, it's no big deal. And you're, you know, your radar is pinging and it's like red flag central around here. And they're like, ah, you know, like, what, what are you so um, afraid of? Or um, you're just overreacting. Just relax, chill out. You know what I mean? And, and you're like, mm. you're just feeling it inside like, you know, the fight or, <clears throat> fight or flight. So to be able to recognize and evade pressure is an art form, right? We aren't taught these really important skills, unfortunately. Um, and when I say evade pressure, I don't mean like evading uh, responsibility. That, that's different. Um, and you know, that is often um, used incorrectly as a hook to... Um, to be pressured to, right? Like someone making you feel responsible for something you're really not responsible for. So being able to identify like, you know, that's that's on you versus this is on me. You know, there, there's boundaries that need to be identified, you know. Um, it comes down to this. Here's, here's some, when I started the video and I said, you know, I'm gonna give you a tool, right? That when we feel pressure, we're gonna develop a habit of recalling something that's going to invalidate it, invalidate the pressure over and over. Here it is. It's remembering who's your boss, which reminded me of the TV show, Who's the Boss, the old 80s show. It's kind of a cute show, Who's the Boss? Just remember that, who's your boss, okay? If you feel that spot consciously in your mind, who your your boss is in your mind then when someone tries to come in and do it covertly okay through their actions it's like it's a way for you to hack your subconscious mind yourself okay if that if that job is already taken okay um, if that spot is is full then there's there's no opening there it's like you're, you're, if you're consciously aware of who's your boss every day when you head out the door, you're going to be able to recognize. It's, it's a strange phenomena. <laughs> phenomenon, I guess. Phenomena is um, plural, right? It's a strange phenomenon. And it's, it's like just consciously, you can hack your subconscious mind through your conscious mind is my point. <laughs> so, um, yes, heading out every day. Okay, noting this is going to prevent someone from covertly trying to hop in that spot to <laughs> take that place. All right. Um, yes, and it doesn't matter at what point you are in your life, what stage or whatever. You can feel that role anytime. You know, it's, it's available for you to, to make that conscious shift in your mind. Okay, so to put this new boundary in place, that's what you're doing by feeling the spot. It's creating a boundary, and I'm going to tell you. It's going to be very noticeable <laughs> to people who are in the habit of uh, pressuring you. And it may even be people that you haven't, you, it hasn't registered with you what they're really doing yet. Because again, it's coming at you in celebrations and compliments and all these different ways that they're pressuring you or manipulating you, okay? And you're not catching it. Um, what's funny is your body catches it and you can blame yourself. And I, I experienced this for years and years where I was uncomfortable around, um, you know, certain people that, you know, seemed to be very friendly or seemed to have my best interest at heart or seemed to be just overly giving and nice and all this stuff. But, you know, I'm like sweating to death and, you know, just on edge. And because your, your gut knows, your gut knows. And it's life-saving, literally, okay? So, um, but when you, when you feel that, that job, that role, you know, it's uh, no vacancy here. It's a, uh, we're not hiring. It's going to be noticeable. And, and sometimes when this happens, people will expose themselves. Okay. Cause whether you voice it or not, you're no longer placating or pacifying. Okay. And you can do this in a polite manner. Um, and you know, 
if someone's offended, it's just, it's further confirmation of what you already knew in your gut, okay? So avoiding pressure might look like simply taking more moments to chill out and relax and do some deep breathing, okay? This is kind of cool. I was thinking about, you know, because like in yoga we do, you know, breathing exercises, right? So to breathe out is, um, is to expire. If you look up the definition of, of to expire, <laughs> It, it means to breathe out, right? Which also means to die, okay? Um, which is why when we're doing these breathing exercises um, and we're trying to bring peace, more peace into our life, you know, it's kind of like sometimes in class and yoga, we'll say, you know, breathe in, you know, all the things that, that you would like in your life, you know, breathe in clarity and breathe in peace and breathe in um, excitement for the future or whatever it is that you need. And then you're going to breathe out, you know, all of the, the stuff that's, you know, bothering you <laughs> and affecting you in a bad way, right? Um, it's kind of like you can just say mantras even, like let it go as you're breathing out, right? So, <clears throat> when you feel this role in your mind, it's going to create a boundary between you and people that, you know, have been covertly trying to fill that role all along. And may have su succeeded here and there and may have failed other times or whatever but um when you put this boundary in place whether they react or not <sighs> this relationship or connection you have with this person will will start to dissolve and it will be um a lot of times not always Okay, but a lot of times it will just be a slow process, just like breathing out. And, um, and that's good, um, depending on your circumstances. It can be good because it's kind of like not confrontational, <laughs> you know, and it's just sort of like peaceful. They've been approaching you in a covert manner. And it's not that you're playing mind games because you don't do that, right? I don't do that. Um, but it's like when you just make this decision, right? Um, it's, it's sort of like it's a relief for you and you're letting this relationship go energetically, okay? And that's what I mean. And so it's kind of like this, um, it's just, it's dying in that manner. It's going away, okay? This connection, the soul tie, whatever you wanna call it, all right? So you can let toxic connections sort of dissolve like a breath in the wind. Okay, you're just letting it go. It just kind of floats away into the ether, right? So when you're kind to someone, I just want you to remember this. Being, because a lot of us were conditioned in this way, okay? When you're kind to someone, it doesn't mean you have to go to the extent that you, you have to prove it, right? To the point of your own detriment. It's, and here's what I mean. Some people can't accept gifts. They can't. Um, and this is every narcissistic type person I've known. They, they just, and here's what I mean. Like they'll either say, oh, thanks. But they, they seem like mad. And you're like, why are you mad? I just got you a birthday gift. Or, um, or they'll say, you know, oh, thanks. And then like, you know, it's something they said they specifically wanted, but then they don't use it. And they may even go and, and repurchase the same thing for themselves because they don't want it to come from you, but they won't tell you. I mean, just strange stuff. Or they might just be like, hmm, okay. And refuse to say thank you. It's just really every narcissistic um, type person I've ever known in my life, they can't, they can't accept gifts. Um, so, um, yeah, you, you know, you may subconsciously or unconsciously um, think or equate that to, you know, they don't understand how much I really care for them, like, especially if it's someone that, you know, you're you're trying to be really close to, like a parent or a sibling or something, you know. So that's what I mean when I say when you're kind to someone, you don't have to prove it to the point of your own detriment because they want you, they want you doing this they want you to just keep attention on them they know if they deny you and you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying well you're stuck see and they're they're the center of your attention and stuff it's just it's so unhealthy um and then also some people can't get enough of you all right um and and so 
this still applies to being kind to someone. Again, you don't have to prove it to the point of your own detriment. When I say some, some people can't get enough of you, in other words, it's kind of like um, you can't relax in their presence, but you force yourself to stay there anyway because <laughs> you want to be nice. All right. Um, it's like you can't separate from them energetically in their presence. It's like they're just, th those are the people that feel like energetic vampires, you know. <laughs> All these otherworldly creatures that just, you know, suck the life right out of you. So, um, yeah. So, just redefine what it means to be kind. If you've been conditioned um, that that equates to just total depletion of yourself, um, your peace, your, your sanity, your, um, your life force energy. Just kind of take a, a look at that. Revisit um, what it means to be kind. But simply making the switch in your mind and heart, right? That you'll only answer to one. One person. One being. Okay? It immediately relieves the pressure that you may have been unconsciously carrying for many years thinking that you have to answer to every one. You know, God is likened to a, a rock in the Bible. Um, as your boss, okay, consider the qualities of a rock. Dependable. Always accessible. You know, the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, right? And supportive. Um, you know, when I was a manager, um, I learned the difference, which I already kind of knew, but to be, you know, in that position, it's, it's interesting to experience firsthand the difference between a boss and a leader, right, from that perspective. So I'm going to share some quotes with you. Okay, I, I pull these up online to illustrate my point here. So um, this is from uh, Peter Drucker. And it says, management is doing things right. Leadership is doing the right things. See that distinction? Um, this is where it's, 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 there's a subtlety, okay? So I just, you could spend some time on this quote and dig deep and understand how manipulation works in this way with people who are um, covert in their tactics to pressure you, you know, because they're the ones determining what's right for you or the right decisions for you to make, okay? And they expect you to, to do those and not question them and to do them right versus someone who's with you and for you, right? Truly, um, they're, they're going to uh, make sure that you are uh, enabled um, and, and supported in making the right decisions, right? Not doing someone else's decisions right per their expectations right again this is this is keeping the authority where it should be okay and then we have a quote from george e.m kelly which says remember the difference between a boss and a leader a boss says go a leader says let's go and then we have um the quote from uh sun tzu from the art of war which is a leader leads by example, not by force. And that right there is, if, if you only remember one, that one's important because, you know, um, you know, a leader is in it with you, okay? Um, and if someone won't accept, if someone expects you to do something they wouldn't do themselves, okay? Um, it, mm, no. That's a really big uh, indication of manipulation, okay? It's kind of like golden rule and, you know, where it says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And, you know, when you flip things around a lot of times, it's like, oh, that, that exposes people. And so, and um, I've done that co conversationally when it really mattered. I'm not a confrontational person, but, you know, sometimes you have to stand your ground and stand up for things that really matter. Um, and things change, you know, when you do that. So... Yeah, a leader is in it with you. So um, I hope that this has given you a lot to think about today. I hope it's given you some good insight. I hope it got the wheels turning. Um, just remember, um, you do not have to um, operate feeling pressured. You can truly let that go. And I hope that the tool that I gave you um, to 
get into that subconscious um, part of your mind is going to ensure that you are um, never finding yourself in that kind of a trap again. So thanks so much for listening. I hope that you have a beautiful day and I'll see you again very soon.